What's going on guys, my name is Dustin and this is End on a Make and the NBA trade deadline finally came today. Uh, we were a little concerned, NBA fans I should say, we're a little concerned that it was going to be kind of a dud. I mean, we'd heard a lot of rumors, there was a lot of big names floating around, um, but it was really late in, in finally, I guess, kind of starting. Really, I mean, we had a couple moves. Obviously, the huge James Harden trade. You have uh, the Bucks getting P.J. Tucker last week. Little things like that. But, you know, the last few hours today were were insane. There were some huge moves. Um, I guess the place to start is with the, the team that just out of nowhere blew it up. The Orlando Magic traded essentially all three of their key pieces. Um, that aren't hurt right now. So Nikola Vucevic, Evan Fournier, and Aaron Gordon all got shipped out uh, for, you know, it's a, it's a mixed bag of, of assets and everything returned back for each trade. Um, so we'll go through that really quick and then just go through a couple other winners and losers from the day. Um, yeah, so let's let's jump into it. So we'll start with Nikola Vucevic which uh, when I woke up, this was the first thing I saw was this trade and it burned my eyeballs out of my skull. I could not believe it. So I had heard that, you know, Vucevic was a popular target for teams, but that it was going to take a lot to get him from Orlando. I mean, he's back to back all star. He's having a career year, even though he's essentially like, I want to say a third of their offense production right now. He's like literally dragging this team to wins. And he goes to the Chicago Bulls, a team that absolutely tipped nobody off. You wouldn't have known they were in the market. And they get him for Wendell Carter, Otto Porter Jr., and two future first-round picks. I believe both are top, like, four or five protected. And, you know, two firsts is a lot for sure. But this move for Chicago is is crazy they you know they finally have a direction after so many years kind of just spinning back and forth getting getting assets flipping them not sure what they were doing missing the playoffs and now they have this direction they can pair Vucevic with Levine which is going to be an insane pick and roll it's going to make new new easy shots for Kobe White as well who can play more off the ball uh, with Vucevic's playmaking like in and out of the post and on top of all of that, it gives them that added steady scoring presence. So Levine has had an incredible season, both playmaking and scoring the ball. That is for sure. But as they try to push to, to stay in the playoff hunt, you know, teams are going to throw everything they have at him. And it would be on these younger players. Uh, bringing in Vucevic really gives them a legitimacy that, you know, not many teams can say they added overnight like in in 10 minutes um and in one 10 minute transaction the bulls have gone from you know a fringe playoff team maybe they'll, they'll win a couple games in a series to you know not contenders but they're certainly going to be in the mix for like four five six and you know Vucevic isn't the flashiest star, but I know a ton of fans were upset to see that Chicago was the team that swooped and got him. Um, for the Magic, Wendell Carter still is only like 22, 23 years old, which is young enough to fit with this new timeline they're on. Otto Porter, um, I didn't see if they bought him out yet or not, but I don't think he'll be with the team too long. I forgot he was making $28 million too, and I saw that at about blew my eyes out too um and obviously the two picks are really what they're after here they wanted to you know just load up one of them is for this year's lottery or for this year's draft which we'll see how chicago does but should convey to you know a pretty good pick for them and it just you know it signals that whole reset and so not only did vucevic go aaron gordon goes to denver in exchange for Gary Harris, R.J. Hampton, and another first-round pick. This one, you know, not quite as good as the two firsts. And Wendell Carter and Porter, just because the Nuggets picks aren't going to be that good. Like, they're, they're going to be lower for sure because of just how good the Nuggets are. And Aaron Gordon, I'm really interested to see how he fits in on this team. 
mostly because he was kind of miscast as a superstar in Orlando these last few years. He really took it upon himself to try to do it all. And, you know, it was a mixed bag of results, to, to be fair. So I think in Denver, playing behind, you know, a natural pecking order like Jokic, Jamal Murray, and then maybe even behind Michael Porter Jr., I think it's going to give him, you know, that defined role and kind of give him a bigger chance to thrive, not to mention the the off-ball cuts and dunks we'll probably get, considering he'll be, you know, on the court with Jokic at the same time. So that's going to be cool to watch in and of itself. I do really like this move for Denver, too. Um, I think they absolutely win in this scenario. The only thing that sticks out to me is it feels like this was, like, a tax to replace Jeremy Grant. I don't think they expected Jeremy Grant to go to Detroit and just completely light it up like crazy. So I'm sure they were like, well, I guess we got to fill this position now. And so, you know, they go out. Getting Gary Harris off the books is big as well because he has been very, very inconsistent in the lineup the last couple seasons. And he's still making like $20 million a year. So for the Magic to take those, those, you know, that salary on, they have to either think that the pick is going to be fine or really believe in R.J. Hampton, who is a talented rookie, just hasn't been playing as much because, you know, Denver is so deep. And this move is kind of also addition by subtraction. I was I was saying to someone is it feels like Denver was like, we have too many people. Let's just do a two for one and call it a day, clear up the depth chart a little bit, bring in a reliable dude we can put on the wing and and make this run. So I'm really interested to see how Aaron Gordon slides into that role on a true contending team. Um, but for, for this one, I think it's a little bit better for Denver than it is for Orlando. And then there's the last one, which I'm sure teams are absolutely kicking themselves over, which is Evan Fournier to the Celtics for Jeff Teague and two second round picks. Uh, Fournier is a really talented shooter. I think he's at like 39% from three so far this season, 19 points a game. I don't know if he'll match that production in Boston because you know, they have so many established scorers already, but he certainly adds a depth and an outside shooting presence that they severely needed. Uh, this was a team that was absolutely getting exposed whenever Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum would hit the bench. And, you know, just bringing in Fournier adds in one of those dudes that they can count on to, you know, find the open man, create a shot for himself, and just, like, go get a bucket when they need it. And it's funny to see um, Danny Ainge finally make the trade. And, you know, it's not the most exciting thing. Two second-round picks from Boston aren't going to be a whole, you know, a whole lot of return in terms of value. But it at least gets Fournier off the books. It gets him a couple more assets. And it gives them, you know, just more ammunition going into the next couple years as they try to rebuild. And, I mean, overall... I like it. I'm surprised that the Magic were as swift as they were, but I'm at the same time kind of surprised that they stopped there and that we didn't see dudes like Terrence Ross and Kem Birch, Mo Bamba, any of those guys get shipped out as well. Um, but, you know, maybe maybe there's long-term plans there. Maybe not. Maybe they're just going to, you know, package those assets back. It'll be interesting, too to see what they do with this, you know, this kind of backlog of guards now that they have Hampton to go along with Cole Anthony and Markel Fultz. Um, I hope that they give it a try because I'd be really interested in seeing how the three of them share the floor or share the rotation even. They all have pretty different skill sets. So to see them just punt on one, which would probably be Markel, just because he's already signed the extension, it'd be a bummer. It'd be disappointing to see it happen, you know, so soon. Uh, but anyways, other trades did happen. Uh, Oklahoma City sent George Hill to Philadelphia, which kind of immediately took them out of the Kyle Lowry sweepstakes. And this is a good move for Philly, for sure. Um it, it gives them that backup point guard, which they need. It gives them that scoring option, which they needed. And for Oklahoma City, 
you get the you get the sense that they want every pick in one of these drafts because now going forward they have 34 total picks in the next seven drafts which is absolutely insane you have like they're going to cycle through two or three teams worth of players by the time they're done with it or they're going to throw all of these assets at someone and go get themselves another superstar but i can't wait to see what they are going to do um so oh, i like it though i like it for philly as opposed to overpaying to bring in cal lowry like some of the deals that were getting leaked about him or you know around him some of the uh the offers they were looking for were really like out there and i think the sixers offer was like danny green tyrese maxi matisse Thybul, and two picks and like that's a lot considering lowry's 35 and gonna be a free agent after this season and I get that, you know, he wants to go to Philly. Philly's his home. That was one of his, like, destination teams. But, like, you got George Hill for basically nothing. And he gives you a veteran presence that can score and keep the young players calm. It's like, may, is he going to go win you as many games as Kyle Lowry? Maybe? No. But assuming Embiid gets back and everything's fine and people stay healthy, it's not like... It's not like George Hill is going to be out there losing games for him either. We saw the presence that he brought to Milwaukee, even when he wasn't exactly like lighting it up. So I don't know. I really like the value of it for Philly a lot more than if they had gone all in to get Lowry, even if Lowry did, does have that championship pedigree, uh, which also is in Toronto at the end of the day. They make a move. They send out a Raptor. But it's not Kyle Lowry. It's Norman Powell, who was another name that just absolutely heated up over the last couple days with trade speculation. And they sent him to Portland for Gary Trent Jr. And this move makes no sense to me. Well, it makes sense to me. I can see what Portland's thinking. But, like, it's such a lateral move. So Norman Powell right now is the third best three-point percentage in the league. He's having an unbelievable season. He just had, like, 50 a couple games ago, or last week, I want to say. Like, he just went off for a career night a couple weeks, like, a week or so ago. And Gary Trent Jr. has also been pretty good this year, albeit a little more inconsistent. And it just seems crazy that Portland would, would flip him. I know Trent is coming up on restricted free agency, so maybe they were thinking, oh, we can't afford to re-sign him, we might as well get the asset back in Norman Powell, or they were thinking, hey, we need more consistent outside shooting because Dame and CJ are so good at getting open shots for guys. Nurkic is coming back, and he's so good at that, too. So, I don't know, really. Like, I think this move makes more sense for Toronto because they bring in Gary Trent and Rodney Hood. And Rodney Hood is more of like a win now, whereas Gary Trent Jr. is a good piece for, for Nick Nurse to use in that offense. He can be, you know, a good plug-and-play defender as well. So we'll see what happens. I'm sure he'll learn a lot from people like Kyle Lowry and Fred Van Vliet as well. And it should be it should be interesting. Um, I don't think this is the Portland move that really, like, pushes them over the top. I think they really wanted Aaron Gordon but just didn't have the assets, maybe didn't want to give up, you know, someone like a Simons, like an Anthony Simons or – you know, I heard they were putting Zach Collins' name out there, but he's still coming back from injury as well. So that might have been, you know, all smoke screens too. But I will see. We'll see with Portland. They won tonight. Dame had a huge play at the end to draw the foul, get the three free throws, and lift him up to the win tonight. Which, <coughs> you know, he's been doing that all year, so can't be surprised with that. We'll see how they look. Nurkic coming back Friday now, apparently adding in Norman Powell. CJ's back and looking better than ever, too. So they're going to be a fun team to watch still regardless. It's just, you know, it's a little weird because I know Blazer fans were really in on Gary Trent as well, at least from what I saw. So <laughs> I'd be remiss. Uh, a lot of these have just been wins. But there was one very big loser in this whole thing, which is such a shame. And it's the Houston Rockets. I can't believe the way the Houston Rockets have mismanaged this whole thing. Uh, they send out Oladipo, finally, to Miami, the team he's been linked to since he was still in Indiana. And 
they bring back Avery Bradley and Kelly Olynyk, which puts the grand total, I think, for the trade for James Harden to four picks and five pick swaps, or five and four, I think I might have them flipped, 20 games of Victor Oladipo, Kelly Olynyk, and Avery Bradley is what the Rockets got back for James Harden. Uh, meanwhile, they could have also just kept Karis LeVert, who just hit a game-icing shot for the Pacers the other night, or Jared Allen, who has played so well that they're talking about extending him on the Cavs with a $100 million deal, and they bought out Andre Drummond and traded away JaVale McGee. So it already looks bad before, especially with you know Oladipo turning down the two-year extension earlier this week, but just yikes like I feel so bad for Rockets fans like that's tough that's a tough spot to be in um yeah I don't just imagine that like I know James Harden wanted out and but like there are so many better offers I I don't know I don't know what the plan was here I don't know if they thought Oladipo was gonna be like a no we're gonna stay competitive we're gonna try to win now um just, yeah, I'm sorry, Rockets fans. I really am. Uh, last one, and this isn't important, really. It's just interesting to me. But uh, the Hawks are trading Rajon Rondo to the Clippers for Lou Williams. Uh, I think Lou Williams, you know, if he doesn't retire as he threatened, he would if the Clippers ever traded him. I think he'll enjoy playing for his hometown team. And then at the same time, really all I care about is I need to see everything that happens in a locker room between Rondo and Pat Bev. I think that is just such a recipe for for incredible moments and stories. I cannot wait to hear the things that come out about it. Um, but yeah, I think there's there are a couple other little deals here and there, but nothing too to stand out ish the uh the lakers and the nets both stand stood pad pretty much they you know the lakers found them themselves in a lot of different rumors for players like oladipo or lowry uh, ultimately they decided not to and they're just going to play the buyout market which we already knew the nets would as well and also the knicks um i gotta say shout out to the knicks for not just going all in and trading for Depo and then <laughs> losing him in the offseason and having given up like two or three assets to get him. That's a very unmixed move, and I'm happy to see them do that. I love that for their fans because they are a good competitive team, and they just came back from down 17 in the fourth quarter tonight and got a win. They are trending in the right direction, and it was cool to see them stand pat, and now they're apparently in the conversation you know, for Andre Drummond once, he, once his buyout is finalized. And that's all I got. Uh, I was going a little longer than I wanted it to. Uh, if you watched the whole thing, really appreciate it. Uh, let me know your thoughts too in the comments on you know who you think won the won the deadline, who you think is going to be a big buyout market uh, add on for who for some team, and just yeah, just let me know. Let me know how you think players are going to do on their new teams. And thank you again. I will be back soon.